My process is purely logistical, narrowly focused by design. I'm not here to take sides. It's not my place to formulate any opinion. No one who can afford me needs to waste time winning me to some cause. I serve no god or country. I fly no flag. If I'm effective, it's because of one simple fact. I don't give a f- <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, a weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, current and ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends, take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? Execution is everything. The killer is next. Joining me today is a recurring guest, an honorary IMF agent, Dan Sacklunch Sakulich. Yeah, buddy. Welcome back, dude. Let me give you some some well earned applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Glad to be back, brother. Yeah, welcome back. Um I did some math. We had a couple misses. Yeah. We, we had a couple misses. Yeah, we try so we tr- I it's my pick. We tried to do one that I wanted to do for Halloween and just wasn't able. You can't get it in Brazil for some reason on Amazon Prime, which uh, hopefully we can. I'll see if we can make it work. It's called Totally Killer. I thought it was. It does look cool. I thought it was fun. Like it's not. I love 80s. Yeah, dude. I think that's uh, that's why I picked it because I thought we would have a good time with it. So maybe maybe we can figure out how to how to watch that because i'm primed for we'll it. Find it yeah but, but you were saying you had some math yeah i did some math this is do you know what episode this is for you on should you watch this this surprised me maybe 15 33 this is the 33rd really? episode with sack lunch if i'm not mistaken really? i mean uh, granted my new format we do part one and part two so that takes into effect you know, one movie is two episodes, but so yeah, then we're probably right around 18, 19. Yeah. So 33 episodes, really glad to have you back on the show. This was my second pick. Like I said, since my first pick wasn't available in Brazil, which is where you're calling from. That's correct. The description for this one, the killer after a fateful near miss, an assassin battles his employers and himself. It's interesting. On an international manhunt, he insists isn't personal. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really like that no. description. To be honest, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's so. First of all, it says near miss. Yeah, nah. He. I mean, no spoilers, but he hits something. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm, I'm a little confused on that. And then I'm pretty sure that he insists that what he's going out to do is very personal but not to make the act itself personal correct so yeah yeah horrible description usually this is crap 
But, uh, and again, it was. This one's double crap. Yeah, double yeah. double crap. Directed by David Fincher. Top build stars are Michael Fassbender, Tilda Swinton, and Charles Parnell, who is the lawyer in this film. I guess he was the third build, top build star. I didn't know who he was, but glad to have you, Charles. I mean, realistically, it was just Fassbender and Tilda Swinton, and even she was only only on for like five minutes yeah not long maybe 15 15 minutes max runtime of one hour and 58 minutes which i think if we can keep movies most movies i would say nine out of ten movies should be under two hours agree but like for example napoleon I want it to be super long or dune Agreed. or movies like that i'm i'm down with it being long but movies like this Thank you for keeping it under two hours. Amen. Rated R genre on Rotten Tomatoes says mystery, thriller, slash action. And IMDb says action, adventure, crime. <sighs> I don't I don't like either one of those combinations. I don't like mystery. I don't feel like it's a mystery. I would say there, no. there is it's thrilling at times. And there is some yeah. action, but it's not an action movie per se, I don't think. It's really not. No, I would agree with that. It's um and we'll get into it this week and next week, but it's a it's a slow burn at times. Yes. Okay. Right. And I have some thoughts on that. I'm sure you do as well. Yes. IMDB rates this a six point eight out of ten from hundred and five thousand reviews. Ron Tomatoes, however, gives it an eighty-five percent from two hundred and fifty critic ratings and fifty-nine percent from one thousand plus audience ratings. What do you oh, feel really? about that? Okay. I find it interesting that there's always such a, a trite contrast between IMDB and Rotten Tomatoes. But I I would probably see this as you're going to get a lot of middle of the road type of responses with, you know, maybe 25% hating it, 25% loving it. And the other 50% are going to be right down the middle. Yeah. They're going to be like, that was fine. I don't need to see it again, but that was fine. You're going to enjoy the review, the reviews uh, category this, this week, because (laughs) um, there's some people that were not, not liking it. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll just put it that that way. Okay. Uh, where to watch this at the time of this recording? You can stream this only on Netflix, as this is a Netflix joint. If you choose the highest tier of our Patreon account, you'll have access to the Popcorn Priest permanent collection. Go to patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest for details. And listen, this is hilarious because. Uh, we brought up the fact that we were going to watch Totally Killer, and it was a an Amazon Prime joint, yet you c- couldn't watch it in Brazil. Like, I wonder if there are, are other titles that are similar like that in on Netflix where you can't watch them in certain geographical areas. Well, we ran into this once before where I couldn't find a movie. And I think it might have been one of the Mission Impossibles. Yeah. It, it was on your Netflix, but I had to, to rent it on Apple TV. So Yeah. But we haven't ran into it from the standpoint of it being a Netflix joint. No. So no, not yet. But we so. have ran into it with Netflix. Yeah, for sure. It's weird. I don't it's gotta be licensing and all that stuff. It's gotta be for regions and yeah. whatever, but still I to be honest, the streaming situation, I don't like it. It's not good. I'll always be a proponent of physical media. I'll never not have it, right? If I own it, I can watch it whenever I want. Yeah. Um, Listen to this. My buddy uh, JJ sent this to me. It's a tweet from Guillermo del Toro. You know who he is, right? Yes, I do. This is his tweet. He says, physical media is almost a Fahrenheit 451, where people memorized entire books and thus became the book they loved, level of responsibility. If you own a great 4K HD Blu-ray, DVD, etc., etc. of a film or films you love, you are the custodian of those films for generations to come. And amen to that, Mr. Toro, yeah. because that's why I still buy stuff because 
there's like my son, he loves Jurassic Park. And I swear it gets thrown around to all the streaming services. We thought it was on Paramount. Then it, then it wasn't. Then it went to Peacock. And now it's only on Prime. So like, and that's within the last three months. So I just need to buy all of those for my son because it's kind of ridiculous. Not only that, but what what happens when they start to change certain elements of the film because culture has the Overton window has swung to one side or the other and they go in and they physically change the the movies like there's been a lot of examples of of where they've they've done that sort of thing based on where what country it's in and and who the united states is aligned with that that particular decade etc etc yeah disney does that a lot when they bring back old content and put it on their streaming platform it sucks man like just i don't mind a you know, what is it called? Uh, you know, it was it was made in the 40s. So there's some maybe some insensitivity to certain demographics. But like you be the choice, you be the judge. If you don't want to watch this, we're going to allow it to be a almost like a historical document. Like this is from history. Take it for what it's worth. Or like smoking, for example, like everyone smoked in movies. And now it's like, oh, no one, no one smoked in movies. And then if they do, it's like, hey, there's a depiction of someone smoking, you know, just you're aware. I hearken back to nostalgia very often on these podcasts. And honestly, if, if you're changing something on me, you know, 20 years later, that's it's going to take so much away from it. It's just going to completely pervert the entire feeling I, I had mm-hmm. yeah. from from when I first saw it. Well, it, it's like the uh, whole Star Wars thing. I, I get it. If you're a director, you should have the right to make changes to a film if you want to. But at least give us, the fans, the ability to watch it how we watched it and also have the other versions so that we can enjoy all of them but don't just sure. never let us have it like there's people out there who have painstakingly gone to all these different source material and recreated restored the star wars movies the for the first three you know movies so that they can watch it how they watched it in the 70s and 80s and it's silly that someone's got to do that but it's out there yeah and again it's it's what what am i paying for like i i if i'm paying for something going in expecting it to be something but you've changed it like that's an issue and i agree with you because it can't just be hey let me make that decision other people if they want to make the decision to to see it on the other side the newer version all the more power to you but we should all be responsible and accountable for what we want, for what content we digest. Yeah, I love it. Sorry, the little little side tangent, but I think it has to be said. That was good. All right, Mr. Sack Lunch, are you ready? Yes. For Popcorn Reviews the Reviews. I was born ready. Okay, we're going to do the slingshot, or the what is yes. it? What do I call it? The slingshot? No, that's not right. The the whiplash. One ones and te- ones and tens. And if you haven't okay. heard the show, we this is where we handpick some one out of ten reviews from normal people and ten out of ten reviews, and we basically laugh and have a good time. Doesn't reviews the reviews deserve a stinger at this point? I need to find a clip. I just don't know. I mean, my voice, yeah, you my gotta. voice is the clip right now, but I should find some kind of movie clip that would relate to reviews. Yeah, I think it deserves a stinger. If you find one, I'll think. Or if you think of one, yeah, I'll 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 allow it. All right, you want to you want to end on a ten or a one? Let's end on a one this time. Okay, I like it. I don't know why I just got <laughs> so excited. I think that's a good that's a good choice. All right, first ten out of ten. Well worth the wait. Says. Munkin, Munkinkly, Munkinkly, Fassbender on top form, Swinton on top form, Cerebral, Iconic, 
with an aesthetic all its own. I've seen some reviews where they say it's slow, it's dull. They are missing the point. We are invited to share his life, and these are aspects of it. In my own opinion, it was well-paced and was over before I knew it. I know it's a fantasy, but elements of the narrative are very well thought out and help drive the story to its conclusion. It's nice to have Fassbender back. I've missed his output in the last few years. All in all, I loved it. And my only regret is that I can never again see it for the first time. Ten out of ten stars. <laughs> wow. Um, first of all, there's there's like 25% of me that agrees with him. Second of all, I guarantee this individual tucks every shirt in. Hey, maybe he does or she does. I don't agree with he or she or they saying it's a fantasy. I know. That's weird. <laughs> it's not a fantasy. It, it's just a story about a serial, or not a serial killer, a, a, an assassin. Well, fine line. Fine line between the two. But but do you think that assassins like this actually exist? I do. You do? Yeah, I do. I think they're... You don't think you it's gotta like... Be, you got to be a, a different kind of dude to be able to kill many people for money but it's not like high profile people get off all the time right no it's usually like some chubby wife trying to pay or chubby husband trying to pay the local gas stations cousin's (laughs) third uncle ten thousand dollars to do the job and it usually gets (laughs) but <laughs> listen i bet there are more of these types of of assassinations than we know because he talks about it in the movie in the countless you know monologues that he has where he's talking about how you know i can poison someone over the course of many weeks and no one will even know if i did my job right like no one knows or or if i make them slip down the stairs and break their neck, you know, people won't know. Yeah, I mean... I bet there's more of that than we know, than we think we know. Right. Minus the Clintons, and there's probably not too much of it happening. (laughs) Okay. All right. Let's go to our first one out of ten. Pointless movie says, Tzir Tzula. Tzir Tzir Tzula. Okay. The worst yeah. movie I watched in a long time. After done watching it, I still did not know anything about the main character. By the way, I I'm, I'm not having a stroke. This is how it's read, how they wrote the review, okay? Okay. Maybe that he is an idiot as he tries to repeat the same thing over and over again with the same failed result and not seeing that what he is doing is not working. Most of the movie is watching a man travel from place to place. Nothing else. Just travel. If (laughs) If you into a guy traveling in different kinds of transportation, go for it. (laughs) <laughs> All the hype about this movie must be by the people involved in the production because this movie really takes you nowhere. Don't waste your time on this. One out of ten stars. <laughs> oh, that would that would got my funny bone because I kept thinking about it. And he's not completely wrong. I mean he's so not wrong. He like, I'm twenty five percent in agreement with him. Oh, Ah, man, that was well done. Yeah, Yeah, I'm with him on on that. Yeah, nothing else, just travel. Just travel. (laughs) I love it when he says, if you're into a guy traveling in different kinds of transportation, go for it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So good. All right, here's our second 10 out of 10. That's freaking badass. Says, love Michael (laughs) Jordan. Not okay. I love Michael Jordan, just love Michael <laughs> Jordan. He's saying that as a statement. You should love Michael Jordan. Right. Of course. The killer 
is the best picture this year. Technically, it's perfectly executed. There is nothing to criticize. The score is amazing and blends perfectly with the soundtrack and sound design. The cinematography is phenomenal, and Fassbender is outstanding. It's quite a slow-moving thriller, and it's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Fassbender spends a lot of time doing nothing while narrating it and talking nonsense. It might not sound fantastic, but you could watch several hours of this. When movies do narration well, it cannot get much better. To hear his thoughts live while making it seem natural is hard to do. How can you not enjoy a movie about an intelligent guy who's good at doing his job? It's thrilling and highly enjoyable. One of Fincher's best. Don't say too much, since most of his movies are incredible. 10 out of 10. There's so much. Like, do you think that he was trying to be ironic and funny? I don't know. I mean, that's kind of how I read it, but... (laughs) But he's saying, like, there's nothing to criticize. It was a slow movie, but it was great. Like, wait a minute. You can't have both, can you? (laughs) I just love the two sentences. It's quite a slow-moving thriller period and it's awesome <laughs> period <laughs> and it's awesome ah, look uh, i guess i guess 50 percent of me agrees with this guy as well so yeah. maybe we could cobble together one perfect review from all of these guys <laughs> all of them I, I would say so far we're on that track for sure all right here's our second one out of ten a crime against humanity says oh, this guy <laughs> that's aggressive <laughs> he's coming in hot mr op op james says op james this film causes and he puts film in quotation marks so he doesn't even oh. want to say that it's a real film it's a fake film it's not even a real Making one eggs. this film causes harm through existing <laughs> dude okay the world is a much worse place with it in it. Easily, Whoa. yeah. Easily one of the most terrible pieces of cinema ever created. Nothing, literally nothing occurs in this movie. The plot is as flat as possible. The minimum amount of thought went into its creation, and then that was dialed back. Not to mention the total absence of dialogue. The script is really one page that just repeats itself over and over again. Likely it was written on a cocktail napkin and then submitted to Netflix. (laughs) It's possible the main character was created as a trope of the INCL fan base. Fincher is cold over the decades. However... Who cares to watch this disgusting man-child for two hours just to wink at the audience? Even Joe Rogan might balk at the lack of depth or understanding present presented by the protagonist. One out of ten stars. Whoa. Why are we bringing Did Joe Rogan into this? Dig it, Joe. Whoa. Oh, easy guy. What What does that uh, have anything to do with Joe Rogan? I think because he's saying that Joe Rogan has no depth. Oh, all right. Well, he's digging. He's digging at everybody in this. He's, he's there's nobody off off limits, man. Like hide your children, hide your wives, hide your children, They're raping hide everybody your out here. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. O P E James. I bet you, like he's the type of guy that like you can't bring up anything no in culture right now without him picking a, a political side like making it super political about everything well this is how just just tell me one like sentence about e- uh, anything a movie or anything and then uh, i'll tell you op james's response okay i since you brought up star wars i would say that that star wars was an absolute epic of its time <sighs> <laughs> that's how he starts do you think he do you think he rubs his forehead yeah while he sighs like that? yeah and he okay. sighs loud enough he's not even in the conversation with you he's off to the side 
And he sighs loud <laughs> enough so that you can hear him and you're like, what? So he can start talking about how he hates. So he can engage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that was uh, amazing. Well right. done, sir. Last 10 out of 10. If you don't like this movie, you just don't understand cinema. I like it when they insult people. If, if, if you don't like this, you're an idiot. <laughs> like you're not on my level. Yeah, I'm way more cultured than you, says Micah Bode. Bode. Micah, Micah Bode. I go on here seeing many negative reviews for the killer. People saying things like, it's predictable, or we've seen this already done before. Look deeper. If you know David Fincher, you know he is not a surface-level auteur. Like the killer, he is meticulous, exact, and purposeful. And every part of the script and story, that doesn't make sense, everything has meaning. And for those who see this movie as soulless or mundane or not looking deep enough or just don't have the required intellect to see what Fincher is saying here. <laughs> again, he's digging at your intelligence. My recommendation, watch it again and then look deeper. You will find meaning in value if you look past this being a movie and focus on it as a story. It has great depth and can teach someone great insight if they let it. Unless you are someone who likes Marvel movies that spoon feed every part of the story to the audience as if they are brainless. 10 out of 10 stars. Oh, man. This should have been titled, You Must Look Deeper. Deep. <laughs> I like to go deep. Here's, here's my thing. Is this is the type of guy who, when he has a date that comes to his house mm -hmm. like he puts old books like grapes of wrath or something <laughs> like that on the coffee table so so he looks like he is reading all these deep like, <laughs> novels man. and one of them is like open and there's like yeah a lot of like pages that are corner <laughs> yeah full <laughs> <laughs> he uh, highlights it. Is that what you were gonna say? Is he, he highlights certain things. Yeah, yeah. There's some. Uh, there's some scrawled, you know, notes on some of the pages. And and if someone points at it, he's like, "Oh, those are some of my musings." All right, man. Are you ready for our last one out of ten, Dan? Oh man, let's do it. Garbage says <laughs> Kumar. Gar Grun. Kumar Grun. If you are one of those people, are you one of those people, Dan? <laughs> I must be. If you are one of those people that like long shots in a movie where nothing absolutely happens, where the protagonist just goes about his day and describes the boredom to the point that you feel the boredom, and if you like being dropped into situations without any explanation, who is this new character? Why should we invest in them? And you consider that to be fine filmmaking in quotation marks? Then you will like this movie. You probably also like Drive by Nicholas Winding Refn. <laughs> I actually do. I do, yeah. I'm, not, I'm like, oh yeah, Drive is dope. A movie where... Yeah. <laughs> a movie where Ryan Gosling pretty much drives around with a toothpick in his mouth. If, however, you care about things like character investment, plot, logic, or something actually happening, well, then this movie is not for you. The opening was so insanely boring. I'm surprised the screenwriter did not fall asleep writing that screenplay. Skip. One out of ten stars. Once again, why is it that these people like to insult other audience members? Because that's who they're digging at, ultimately. Yeah, right? it's, it's either like, you're dumb enough to like this or you're not smart enough to like this. <laughs> exactly. Where, once again, it's probably 50% that, that, or maybe even it's like 80% fall right in the middle, and then it's 10% for the tens and 10% for the ones. Yeah, exactly. I mean, listen, I say this all the time. And it's starting to get old, but number one, David Fincher. So if you know, well, actually, we should probably get into should you should or shouldn't you watch this? 
Yeah. That way we can describe how, like, what what you're getting into. I would agree with that. All right, let's get into should or shouldn't you watch this. Here are five reasons why you should watch this. And then you give me any that we may have missed. Number one, if you like David Fincher, this is for you. I could safely say that. I'm pretty sure. For sure. And number two, if you like movies like The Zodiac, who also, which was directed by David Fincher... Or like true, like Joe and Hall. yeah. Or if you, or like true crime stuff. I I think this is for you. Yes. Number three, if you don't like slower movie films, this is not for you. <laughs> Correct. As we have found as, out from the reviews, as highlighted, <laughs> yeah, as highlighted by some of the reviewers, the scathing, angry reviews. <laughs> Number four. Even, even some of the good ones, though. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah like, they, they're talking about it too. And number four, if you like Fassbender, I think you should see this. He's, I mean, this is all about him. I mean, not him, but he plays the, the character and he's the main part of this movie. So if you like him, you should watch this. And he's great. Yeah. And number five, if you don't like stabs or sniping, sniping shots, then, I mean, this has those in it. So you should maybe not watch it if you don't like those things. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say if you just want to watch a movie where you're you're going to be entertained, this is for you. But if you, if you are looking for an epic, this is not for you. Yeah, it's not a Marvel movie. It's not a, you know... Thank God for it. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how anybody can watch a Marvel movie anymore. It's the same regurgitated stuff. And I, I guess to some degree, you could sort of say that, you know, the assassin, how many times has that been regurgitated? But, but here, you know, hey, this here, one. Here's something that you got to consider. This was based on a graphic novel. So it's basically a comic book. I know it's not a Marvel comic book, but it is a, it is a <laughs> right. graphic novel. So any other reasons? That we missed for why you should or shouldn't watch this. No, I, I think that you summed it up well. All right. Let's get into buy the numbers. Blank. For God's sake, just give me the damn number. All right. The Killer, directed by David Fincher, is currently the top ranking English language movie on Netflix, attracting 27.9 million viewers and 55.7 million hours viewed. And then I looked some more stats up. It's two weeks in a row in the top 10 and also top 10 in 93 countries. Wow. Yeah, it was number one here for a week. Yeah. Maybe even two. But yeah. So I, I'm did, not Did gonna... you ever figure out what that, what that translates? No, but... I did do a little more research because of the question I knew you'd ask me. So I have, I looked up the production budget, by the way, also, and then I have the top 10 most popular films. Again, this is in English. I apologize for those who don't have other languages that you speak and live in different countries. These are English films only, but I did look up the top 10 based on hours. It, so these have hours viewed, the runtime, and then how many views. So how many times the movie was viewed. And this was on Netflix website. So it's accurate to a point that they want you to know about it. And how many hours viewed? So, so this one is 55.7 million hours viewed in roughly a week or two. If you figure that it, it's it's two hours, so cut that number in, in half. So call it 27 and a half million watched the the movie how many of them watched it because it was on netflix i don't know call it maybe 40 percent, maybe uh, yeah. even 50 percent. just because when you turn so, it on and it's number one you click on it right right and so now you're taking that number down to what 13 and a half million so like i, I would probably venture to say that this one would be in the 80 to a hundred million range for box office. Yeah, I think that's safe, at least for right now. And and it might it was only released in theaters for like a week, and then 
on Netflix. Do you know what it did in that week? All time world box office hall is four hundred fifty two thousand mm. dollars. So wow. not okay. even half a million for for a week. Probably super limited then. Yeah. I don't even think it was like a wide release. Yeah. What is the budget? Gosh, Netflix loves to spend money in Fincher. I mean, they, they went to a lot of a lot of different locations. I put it probably at sixty three million. This is gonna blow your marbles, bro. A hundred and seventy five oh, no, million dollars. What no, that can't be right. That's what the rumors are. And I, f- I found that rumor on multiple websites. There's no way, brother. There's no way. I don't I, I'm I don't go put to my a, grave. I don't put a pass because they just hired a guy who did knives out to do three Knives Out movies for like $450 million to spread out over three three movies. How much? $450 million for the guy who did Knives Out. And then the sequel that they put on Netflix was The uh, the Glass Onion. Yeah, they have lots huh. of money. So, And he's also yeah. been, he's under contract to do a four-picture four deal. And this was uh, number two because he did Mank which I've heard is not great. Okay. I mentioned this previously, but the graphic novel, The Killer, written by Alexis Nolent, Nolent, illustrated by Luke Giacomon, Giacomon, has been a passion project for David Fincher for nearly 20 years. And like I said, this is the second feature film in a four-year exclusive deal between David Fincher and Netflix with their first film being Mank, which came out in 2020. It says, as for the value of such a heavy-duty deal involving someone of Fincher's caliber, sources indicate this is a major Game of Thrones-esque type deal, in quotation marks, worth over nine figures. So at the most conservative of estimates, there's at least... A hundred million at stake here. Realistically speaking, a number between three hundred million to a half a billion isn't exactly out of the question either. Of what they're uh, paying to get this guy to do movies for the, them. That's shocking. I mean, it's it's almost unsettling. Yeah, it's cr- it's crazy, and and people will watch this and be like, oh, I'm oh, pretty good. And it's like they have no idea how much money and time and effort went into it. It's crazy. Yeah, uh, that's shocking to me. Uh, like I said, I, that I, I I will be searching this like crazy because yeah. I just can't see it. All right, here's here's the top ten, and I'll I'll burn through them as fast as possible. Okay, but I have I have hours viewed and views, which is the okay. same as what I had for the two first two weeks of the killer. So number one is, and these are all. Netflix movies. They didn't put, they're not going to advertise other movies that might have done better than theirs. You know, if they have, if they have like die hard on there for for a certain amount of time and it's like does really well, they're not going to advertise that, but these are all Netflix movies. So number one is red notice with the rock and Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. So 454 million hours viewed and 230 million views. But that's been out for multiple years. And then it goes down from there, obviously. So we've got number two, Don't Look Up, which you hated. The Adam Project, which I thought was fun. Uh, Bird Box is fourth. Great movie. Great movie. The Gray Man, which you and I reviewed. Which is Great fine. Yeah, it's good. You should watch it. Number six, We Can Be Heroes. I don't know what that is. Don't know. Number seven, The Mother. I don't know what that is. Don't know. Number eight, Glass Onion, which I just mentioned. A Knives Out mystery. And then Not a fan. rounding out nine. And, no, dude, it's so good. You should. You have not watched any of those movies? Or two of them? I watched Knives Out. I didn't like it. Oh, man. All right, it's fine. You don't have to like it, but it's really good. Uh, and rounding out the list, nine and ten is Extraction and Extraction Two with uh, Chris Hemsworth, which I haven't watched them, but I've heard that they're really fun 
hyper violent action movies. Yeah, and I like Hemsworth for the most part. I'll, I'll have to. I'm gonna have to think of those a try. Yeah, maybe we maybe we review those. I don't know, but anyway, there's there's a top ten what, list. But what did what did Hemsworth hit? Just just so I can understand the the range. Okay, so number nine, Extraction, two hundred sixty six million hours viewed, and then one hundred thirty five million views. So, and this one is at fifty five million hours viewed. And in 20, two weeks. In two weeks, yeah. So it'll probably okay. make the top so 10 list. It'll probably hit top 10. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, pretty easily. All right, my last, by the numbers, can you name any of the ali- the nine aliases that the killer uses in the movie? <laughs> oh, gosh. I only can I, I only can remember the one. The only one I can, yeah, and that, it's probably the same one that, that I... George Jefferson. Oh, I I remembered Sam Malone from Cheers. Okay, Cheers. Well, George Jefferson is is from, from the Jeffersons. From the Jeffersons, yeah. So obviously there's right. a theme here, and all nine aliases are used from TV shows. So dang it, I wish I would have realized that. Felix Unger from The Odd Couple, Archibald Bunker from All in the Family, Oscar Madison from The Odd Couple. Uh, Howard Cunningham from Happy Days, uh, Reuben Kincaid from The Partridge Family, Lou Grant from Lou Grant, Sam Malone from Cheers, and then George Jefferson from The Jeffersons, and then last, uh, Robert Hartley from The Bob Newhart Show. All 70s and early 80s TV shows. That's pretty cool. That's fun. I, I wish I would have realized that sooner. I, I So I just realized it on the last one. Yeah, when I saw Sam Malone and George Jefferson, I was like, there's got to be a connection there. And obviously there was. What What about, I mean, this one's fairly easy, but what about body count? Oh, dude, I didn't even look that up, dude. Did you? No, but I, I, I thought it, it was can't be very high. easy. No. We can't really talk I about them so. right now, but yeah. I would say five. Actually, I take that back. I think it's actually seven. It's six. Okay. Which right. is like for for an assassin movie, it's it's pretty low, man. Yeah. I mean, give me ten kills. I mean, can we just get a Yeah. Or maybe a dozen, a baker's dozen? <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anything that we missed before we break mm-hmm. and come back to part two no i mean by by the numbers i mean he, he kind of spouted out especially in that opening monologue quite a quite a few mm. staff when we meet next week and, and talk I've, I've got some some opinions on but okay. no i i think that we we've, we've set this up pretty well all right man at this point and i'll just say we say sh- you should watch this that based on those items that we he, For sure. At this point, there may be some spoilers up ahead, so if you want to watch and then come back next week and join us for a breakdown of watching and listening to Fassbender go through the Employee Handbook for Killer for Killing from 2023. (laughs) I'm on the social media as I dare you to message the great Popcorn Priest at Popcorn Priest. I love movies and would love it if you share the love. Share this with the movie lover in your life. Another way to support the show is by throwing a few shekels at the priest by visiting patreon.com forward slash popcorn priest and give me money. The easiest way to support the show and the most free is like and subscribe and give us a five-star review. Easier than killing a human for money. (laughs) As always, thanks for listening and thanks to my special guest, Mr. Dan Sacklunch himself. Always a pleasure, my man. Can't wait to, to wrap it up next week. I love it. Join us next week for part two of The Killer, or otherwise known as The Smiths, music to kill by. We'll see you next week.